when you're going to make a bike frame out of metal, your joint options basically are to oxyacetylene braze things together or to TIG weld stuff together. Why would you choose one over the other? What makes the difference between them? I'm going to lay out four reasons why you might choose brazing and alternatively four reasons why you might choose TIG welding uh, for joining the materials of the frame. Let's get into it. So to get technical, let me explain the basic difference between welding and brazing. So uh, let's say you wanted to join two pieces of steel into like a 90 degree corner joint, right? And you wanted to add a little bit of filler uh, between the two of them. With welding, you take both of them and you heat them up to their melting point. So the steel goes from being frozen solid steel to being liquid melted steel at that place where they meet. And you could just fuse them together by, uh, you know, using like a heat source, like a torch or like an arc, and you could just kind of melt them together. That's fusion welding. Generally, you're going to add a filler, and generally, it's going to be basically the same as the parent material. So you're going to take a piece of steel and a piece of steel and a steel filler rod, and you're going to melt them all up to slightly above the temperature where steel melts. And then you're going to pool them all together along that edge, and you're going to make a weld bead. And and the three pieces will basically become one solid uh, united piece of steel. Now, imagine you had these same two pieces of steel and you wanted to join them by brazing. Brazing is where you heat them up not to their own melting point, they never melt. They remain frozen the whole time, but you bring them to a lower temperature that is still hot enough to melt a different material. And so if you have something like bronze, that melts at a lower temperature than steel, but when bronze is molten and it is touching steel that is hot enough to melt bronze, then when it all freezes, it will all stick together and it'll have a lot of adhesion, it'll really stick well. And so you can stick things together like that. It's very similar to break, uh, soldering. If you soldered electrical components together, you're not actually uh, melting the, uh, the, the things that you're trying to stick together when you're soldering, you're just melting the solder. And so that's what brazing is, and it can be very strong and it can work really well, but there's kind of pros and cons and differences. Why would you choose brazing over welding then? And so I'm gonna refer to my list. Uh, brazing is really good for like sleeves. So let's say that you have uh, a lug joint on a bicycle and um, you, you know you're not just sliding the tube into the lug and then you're like with welding you would have to like weld along the edge of it. The beauty of brazing is that there's actually a lot of surface area where the the tube and the lug slide over each other and so with brazing you can heat up that joint and then you can add a little bit of like silver or bronze and it will sweat in there just like plumbers do with copper pipe uh, in your house or something uh, they, they get it to the temperature at which the brazing material uh, will melt and then through capillary action it kind of it kind of sucks in there it wants to follow the heat as long as things are clean and you have the flux it wants to kind of cover that whole area and so that can be really good for certain things like lugs or for certain dropout fittings for certain kinds of sleeves if you're doing like a decorative head tube sleeve or a seat tube sleeve where you've hand carved things and you want it to look really uh, really like decorative or something is really good for that if you were gonna TIG weld something like that uh, it would be a totally different process you could maybe TIG weld along like the edge of it uh, you could slide on a sleeve and then at the end of it you could kind of weld it uh, but there isn't really the same option for like doing sleeves and, and those kinds of joints. And so it's, brazing is really good for that. Brazing is really good for dissimilar metals. So let's say you were making a bike and I just did a head tube badge video. Let's say you want to put a copper head tube badge or a brass or a bronze head tube badge on the front of your head tube or some sort of detail like that. You can actually uh, heat up that and then you, you can, you know, you can braze and attach the uh, the bronze or whatever material to the head tube and you can't really join like steel and bronze uh, with TIG welding or maybe you can with uh, like silicon bronze filler maybe I'm not sure exactly but that's actually TIG brazing so uh, uh, brazing with an oxyacetylene torch lends itself really well for sticking different kinds of things together that's why like jewelers will use it they'll they'll stick you know brass and copper and stainless and different things together with like a silver alloy or something and so it's really good for that for joining to similar metals even uh, when you're talking about stainless steel like from Paragon Machine Works you can buy uh, water bottle bosses for um, you know that are made out of stainless steel and you drop them into a hole in the frame and then you braze or you weld them in and the ones that are made out of 303 stainless steel that's not really a weldable alloy of uh, stainless steel but you can braze it so if you have a steel frame you can drop in those 303 uh, stainless steel alloy 
water bottle bosses and you can silver braze them in there. Uh, you wouldn't really be able to TIG weld those in uh, with great success. They also make ones in 304 stainless that are harder to machine and more expensive and you can weld those in. But anyway, you just have more options with brazing for dissimilar metals. I'm gonna say brazing is easier than TIG welding and I'm gonna give the caveat that it's easier to get up to speed, it's easier to get started and it's easier to, to begin to make good work. And so when you get a TIG welder and you're trying to weld bikes together, it's thin wall stuff and like your torch angle is critical, your electro distance is critical, everything is like really touchy and sensitive and uh, it's hard to get familiar enough that you can do really good work without um, without undercutting the weld or like burning holes and stuff. And brazing is not super easy, but I think uh, it is easier to get up to speed with and to get started with. And I think also the, the equipment that you need is a little bit uh, maybe more affordable to get started with. And so for those reasons, uh, brazing is kind of good for like the beginner who's not familiar with metal work or welding yet. And they're, um, they're just looking to make it easy on themselves to get started. Brazing is really good for that. Brazing is also what you want if you're a classic frame builder. If you're trying to make stuff that has the classic aesthetic, if you want lugs, if you want bilaminate sleeves, if you want to do fillets like fillet brazing, uh, these different kinds of techniques that are the old school. Everybody was brazing bikes until like, you know, maybe the 1980s. Pretty much everybody was making steel bikes with a brazed construction method. And so uh, if you want a more modern aesthetic or if you want production or whatever, then maybe you go to TIG welding. But if you're looking to do classic stuff, you pretty much have to do brazing. And um, you know, if those are the kind of bikes you like and the kind of bikes you aspire to make, then like, you know, game over. Here's your answer. You want brazing. You might also get a TIG welder and do certain things uh, with a TIG welder, but generally you're going to be brazing. So now let's talk about the four main benefits of TIG welding your bike frame. So the first one is going to be that it is faster. So when you uh, when you're familiar with TIG welding and you're good at it, you've done it a bunch of times, you could probably TIG weld a bike frame in you know a, a fraction of the time that you would braze a whole bike frame. Now, if you're really good at brazing, of course you're going to be pretty quick with it. But uh, brazing bikes generally comes also with a lot of like cleanup work and futzing where you're, uh, you know, first when you finish the braze, you let it cool slowly, then you dunk it in water, like hot water preferably, then you scrub off any, of, that's to get off the water soluble flux. And then some of the water soluble flux is probably gonna stick to the frame in spite of being dunked in hot water for a while, like 20 minutes or more. And so uh, you're gonna spend time scraping off the flux. And then uh, if it's fillet brazing, generally you, you take a round file and it takes a lot of time to dress those and sand those and make those look pretty. And boy, do they look pretty, but it's very slow. Uh, if you have lug work, even if you're very good at keeping crisp, clean shorelines, the lugs generally are going to be castings that uh, are a little bit chunky and not very smooth, and they have little uh, little tang things on them to help like dissipate the heat or something at the points. So anyway, there's a lot of screwing around that generally accompanies brazing, especially when you're talking about main joints like uh, uh, the uh, the lugs and the fillets and the, that that sort of thing. And so uh, a TIG welded bike, you know, when you have the tubes clean and ready and prepped and tight to fit together uh, and you're fast and good at TIG welding, you can weld out a frame pretty quickly and then you're done. And with brazing, uh, there's a lot of prep work that goes into it and then there's a lot of cleanup and post work. And so uh, generally for the main joints of the bike anyway, you save a lot of time. It's a lot faster with TIG welding, which I think is why it's been so prominent in industry. It's taken over since like the 1980s. Uh, it's just huge. It's like the way that steel bikes are generally made uh, in factories, like 100%. Uh, TIG welding is also cleaner, so uh, there's this white pasty stuff that you brush on the joints when you're brazing. That's called flux, and it uh, is really important. Uh, it's essential. It helps protect the joint for, you know, it does a lot of valuable things, but it's just messy stuff. I think it's, I don't know how bad it is for your health, but it's just kind of nasty stuff, and I don't really like getting it on my hands, and when you're brazing, there's fumes from, from all sorts of stuff, and it's just kind of nasty stuff. I wear a respirator when I braze generally, so um, you just don't have to deal with that part of the process when you're welding. Welding consists of, you know, the clean materials that you're going to weld and then the argon that comes out of the head of your torch and then uh, whatever stuff that gets hot while you're brazing or I mean while you're welding 
And so uh, I think generally it's a good idea to wear a respirator or have good ventilation there too because of hexavalent chromium apparently. I don't know if that's specific to stainless, but I guess that's a big deal. And then also like hydrocarbons and stuff that are getting hot and being burned off while you're TIG welding. So also important to, to take your safety seriously with TIG welding, but generally if you compare them side by side, TIG welding is a lot cleaner of a process. And so uh, I think that's a big deal. I really don't like being dirty more than I have to, especially with that kind of stuff. I would say that TIG welding is cheaper and I would qualify that. But if you're comparing brazing and welding, uh, TIG welding, the machine is more expensive. Getting started, I think, is a slower and more expensive process. But then uh, the cost that you put into welding a bike frame versus brazing it, uh, brazing it, you're going to have flux, you're going to have oxygen, you're going to have acetylene, and you're going to have the filler. And if you're doing, if you're doing nice fancy bicycles, there's a good chance you're going to be using 56% silver alloy, brazing silver. And uh, that stuff's not cheap you know it's uh it's a lot of money and so it might you know might not have huge amounts of money in each bike frame but uh compared to tig welding tig welding is quite a bit cheaper you have you have argon you have electricity and you have the filler rod and uh you're going to spend considerably less money on tig welding a frame uh so if you're making like three bikes a year it's peanuts you don't worry about it but if you're making you know a fair amount of bikes uh you're going to start to notice the cost savings of tig welding and again that's why tig welding is favored i think in industry it's faster and it's cheaper at scale and so it's a no-brainer for uh you know companies that you know like maxway is the factory that makes the surly frames like all the surly bikes are tig welded you know it's, it's just cheap and economical and straightforward and so the last main reason that I would suggest welding is that if you're making a steel bike, you can braze just about everything. But if you're making bikes or if you aspire to make bikes out of titanium or aluminum, uh, you kind of need to be TIG welding them. And uh, that's pretty much the case. So like uh, if you're, you know, you can TIG weld steel or you can braze steel, but you can't really you can't really braze these other ones. And so uh, it's really valuable. Even if all you're trying to do right now is to make steel bikes, um, you might think, well, you know, it might be nice to have a welder in the shop. I might dabble with titanium. Uh, to go from never having laid a TIG weld to welding a good titanium bead is like a huge, huge jump. But to go from welding a pretty nice steel bead uh, welding bead to, to laying a pretty nice titanium one, that's a much smaller jump. So of course there are differences and you got to get used to it. Although I've heard some uh, experienced TIG welders who, who are very good with titanium and steel say that uh, actually titanium is easier to weld once you're familiar with it and set up for it because the, the weld puddle is less affected by gravity and whatever. Um, so that's something to consider. But anyway, if you want to get into aluminum and titanium, you really need to have the TIG welding process down. And so that's another big chip in the favor. You know, you just can't be doing that with brazing. So what's my take? Ideally, I'm going to do both. I'm going to have a shop that's equipped for both. Since mostly I've built steel bike frames, I'm going to weld anything that makes sense to weld. Anything that I can practically TIG weld, I'm going to weld. And then for little bits and bobs and things that work well, that are suited well to brazing, I'm going to braze those on with an oxycetylene torch. Because like I said, uh, doing something like a water bottle boss in the middle of a thin butted tube is like a tricky thing to TIG weld. And you know, maybe I could get that down, but like, why bother? I have uh, I have brazing. And then the other thing is like uh, when you braze something like that, uh, the way it works is you add the filler and the filler, uh, because of like surface tension, it kind of it kind of wants to like make a little micro fillet. It wants to kind of wet out between the two surfaces. So if you have like um, if you have two two pieces and you have like a 90 degree inside corner joint and you go to braze it, that that filler kind of wants to make a little wet sort of a uh, bridge you know between them uh when you when you add the filler and then it freezes and it, it because it leaves that little micro fillet it's a uh, it, it doesn't it's not a stress riser it actually makes things stronger because it distributes the the sort of forces against you know when you're working against that kind of spreads it out and so anyway the micro fillet is great also helps uh spread over surfaces so uh you know, I want to have brazing around, but it's just kind of a messy pain in the butt when I don't need it. And so that's why I would prefer to have both. If I'm, if I'm getting started on a budget and I don't immediately need TIG welding, I'll start with brazing. If I know that I'm going straight for aluminum and, and titanium, then uh, I'm going to start with the TIG welder. And uh, that's sort of the long and short of it. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.